Hi there, this is going to be a tutorial video on getting Bazite dual booted with Windows on the Lenovo Legion Go. If there's anything that you want to double check, um, there's going to be this Legion Go Tricks site. And here you could scroll down and you could read more in, in more detail about what is and isn't working, bugs and everything like that. So just check here real quick so you know what you're getting into. Before we get started, I want to go over some hardware you're going to need. So here um, you're going to need a physical keyboard. You're going to need a mouse. Although I guess technically it's optional, you could use the trackpad on the Legion, the Legion Go controller if you want. Um, but need a mouse, I prefer using a mouse. And then you're going to need a physical connection to the device. So I have the mouse and keyboard connected via this USB hub to the Legion Go. So, um, you, but you're going to need that physical connection for the install. You'll also need a USB stick. Uh, I have an eight gigabyte stick here. You're going to need one large enough to fit the operating system since we're going to turn this into an operating system installer, USB. And I have a USB-C adapter just so I could, um, you could either plug it in to the Legion Go or I'm, in my case, I'm actually going to put it into the hub on the side and just plug it into the hub. But either way works. You can plug it in directly or use a hub. And finally, make sure you take out any micro SD cards right now um, before you proceed because the micro SD card could in interfere with installation. So it's better to just take it out if you have one in there. Um, and with that, let's get started. So for the installation, we're actually going to follow this unofficial guide on the Bazite website where it says dual booting is not supported, but you can do it. So we're going to be following these steps here. For this first, what we want to do is you want to download this software. I am, you want to uh, download this partition resizer since we're going to downsize the, the Windows partition. You want Bolina Etcher for to um, set up our install media, and then you're going to want to actually download the install media. So this is the Bazite GitHub. And if you go to releases on the right, um, let's go get download the, the ISO that we need. So I'm going to download the latest one, which is um, Bazite 39. So you just have to get that going, and then let's also get Bolina Etcher going. I'm going to download the portable version, and then also the partition manager, manager I've already downloaded and installed. So the first thing we're going to want to do is downsize your Windows partition. So if we just open up that uh, partition resizer app that we downloaded earlier, um, you'll see here that um, I have my Windows partition here. Yours might be, your C drive might be named differently. Um, mine is named like this because I'm using Windows 10 right now. Um, but this should be on any Windows installation. It should all work. So right click, resize, and resize your Windows partition to whatever size you want it to be. Um, so in this case, I'm going to just reduce um, the Windows partition down to like 40 gigs. But honestly, you could do whatever you want. Um, this is all up to you. Whatever is left, the un unallocated you see down in the down here, is what where we will be installing Linux onto. So let's just hit OK, and this will prompt a reboot. So we need to hit Apply Changes, and this will prompt a reboot. So we will have to go through a reboot. And this is after rebooting. Now it's going to just start. Uh, doing the operations to resize the disk. And then afterwards, I'll reboot again back into Windows where um, the disk should be properly resized. And now we're back in Windows. And if you check the partition size, you can now see that the changes have been applied. Um, so this part is now done. Next up, we're going to set up the actual install media. So here you want to click on Lena Etcher Portable, um, the file that we downloaded. And this will take a moment to, to, um, to pop up. Now that's here, we click flash from file and we need to find that ISO file we downloaded. Then next you need to plug in your USB stick. You gotta plug it in and then after you plug it in, you would collect, uh, click flash. I've already actually installed it onto the USB, but, um, but that's what you should do here. And then once it's done, um, you'll have a Bazite installer on the USB stick. And then we can proceed from there. Now that install media is done, I'm going to shut down and boot into the BIOS. So let's just shut down. And then for to boot into the BIOS, what you're going to have to do is hold the volume up button. And while holding volume up, you press the power button. So hold volume up, press power. So if we go into the BIOS setup, the BIOS setup, we just click more settings. So first we're going to want to go into configuration and we want to change the thermal policy from STT to STEMP. Um, but besides that, the other thing we need here is we need to um, we need to disable secure boot. So if you go into security, if you scroll down, there's a secure boot option, and you want to want to change that from enabled to disabled. So change it to disabled, um, then you can exit, and then you just exit saving changes, and exit changes and leave. Um, and now that that's done, uh, we can keep going. 
now that Secure Boot is disabled, now we need to plug in our USB. Um, and you could either plug it in directly into your device with like a USB-C adapter, or if yours is already USB-C, you just plug it in directly in like the bottom port. I'm just gonna plug it into my hub over here. And let's just plug it in and then get into the BIOS again. So hold the volume up, press power, and get into the BIOS menu. So let's just give it a moment. And from here, we're now that we're in the BIOS, we wanna click boot menu this time and click on the USB stick. And then here is where you're gonna start needing the keyboard. So this, the keyboard will be really important for this, um, or rather important, required. So from here, now it's gonna be a little hard to see, but just uh, show, scroll this up and you can look. There's different versions of Bazite to install. So in this case, we want to install either Bazite Deck or Bazite Deck Gnome. Um, so of those two options, Deck is most similar to the Steam Deck setup, um, whereas Gnome is much, the desktop is much more closer to Mac OS like. So take your preference. Like I personally prefer Gnome, but I'll choose Deck for this for this tutorial. So let's just click install, and then we'll let it let it load. So if the actual installer will all be rotated sideways like this because the screen is a native portrait screen. After the installation is done, it'll be defaulted back to um, what you would expect, which is landscape. So I'll just give this a moment um, and I'll be back. And now we're in the installer. And as you can see, it's in the portrait orientation because of the native portrait screen. So that, um, we're gonna have to, I'll film things portrait like this. Uh, anyways, from here on, we just need to go through the menus and just go through the installer. So let's just do that really quick. So let's just choose English. So the mouse, click continue. And here, all the yellow, the yellow warnings, we need to actually um, set up. But one thing that's tricky here is that the network for internet, it doesn't show the yellow symbol, but you actually require it for the installation. So you must set up the internet as well. So um, let's just go about doing that really quick. So for keyboard, I'm just gonna do English done. The time and date, I'm just gonna do my time zone, whatever done. Um, now this is the part that's gonna be a little trickier. So for this, um, we're, I'm gonna have that guide that I showed you earlier up on, I have it on my phone here, um, where we're gonna need this information. Um, but let's, let's set up the partitions as described in the guide. So first we want to do is click advanced custom GUI. Then when you click done, it'll bring up the advanced partition setup. From here, what we want to do is click on the free space and create that first partition. And that first partition is going to be, it says it should be VFAT, but the format's actually EFI. So this is the, this is the only one that's really incorrect here. So slash, and then it says mount point is slash boot slash EFI. So I'm going to click okay there. Oh, actually, let me change this to megabytes first because it's supposed to be 300 megabytes. There we go. And then hit okay. Next, let's click on that free space again, click plus. And we're gonna do that next partition as described, which is ext4, mount point is slash boot. And the size is one gigabyte. And click that free space one more time, click plus. This time make the entire Partition BTRFS and don't put in any sort of mount point or anything. And in the BT, now on the left, that BTRS volume pops up. Now here we're gonna do the sub volumes as described. So clear here, just type in mount point slash and do a mount point again. This time it's slash var. And then finally do one more mount point which is slash var slash home. So you could just do one more quick check to make sure everything looks correct. These bump points look correct. Going back to disks, EFI is 300, boot is one gigabyte, and then we have the rest being for the BTRS. That looks good, so hit done. And now you'll be shown a, just accept the changes. Um, and now we're back here. So now we wanna set up the internet, and for here, in the bot, we're gonna do wireless, cause I have Wi-Fi. Um, you could do wired if you want. And the bottom right is where the buttons are. So I'm gonna click on the select network and then set up everything. So I will skip to after my network is set up. So my network is now set up and now we're gonna do user creation or the root account is basically an admin account. I'm going to enable it and set a password. Um, but if you do this, make sure you don't forget your password. Um, it's hard to recover if you don't 
remember it. So make sure you really remember this password. And same with your user account. For your user account, you could create a username um, for, for the name. You could do whatever you want here. I'm going to do DEC just because a lot of Decky plugins and other software assume DEC as the username because of the Steam Deck. So this is just for compatibility, but you could do whatever you prefer if you don't care for that. And just set a password again. This password um, won't affect game mode at all. Game mode, it auto logs you in. This password is more for um, when you're trying to install other software outside of Steam. There's that, and I, everything looks good. Everything is fully um, set up. So on the bottom right, there's gonna be the begin installation button. So let's just click begin install. And now we wait, this will take a while. So you could go get some coffee or something and come back. So it's not complete. Um, so I'm just going to click restart. Um, but the initial boot will also take a long time. So I will be back after the initial boot. So if you run into the screen after a reboot, um, this is for setting up secure boot and we are not going to do that, so you just click Continue Boot. If you want to do Secure Boot, you should ask in the Bazite Discord on how to set it up. But for now, you just hit Continue, and in here, you should also just do the first option, Fedora Linux. Actually, the option shouldn't matter. But anyways, now that you've got through that, it's going to boot, and this will take a while, so um, I'll be back in a little bit. All right, so now that we're booted, um, let's just change the display so that it's oriented correctly and then proceed from there. So let's just take this and full screen it. And I think first I'll actually change the scaling down. So there is going to be an apply button on the bottom right. It's off screen, but there we go. Hit apply, um, keep it so it's reduced. Now just do manual and this should be the orientation. Hit apply. There we go. So now the orientation is correct. Let's just keep it. And let's just flip it back to uh, what it should be. Now that this is set up, we could continue on with the install process. So from here, I click next, and we're going to want Decky Loader um, for TDP control and some other controls. So Decky Loader is the only thing here that um, I would say you definitely should install um, because it's critical for some functionality. Um, but for everything else, you could do whatever you want. So if you want MUDEC, you could install MUDEC right now, and whatever else, just click, look through, and take your time, decide on what you want. Um, the only thing that I think you definitely need is Decky Loader, so just choose this one. And for this tutorial, I'm just going to do that. But you can do whatever you want. Hit Install. And if you get prompted with this, use the file, Finish, and you just put in a password, whatever. And then here's your super user password. And I'll just let it run. So you can see it, it running here, and I'll show you when it's done. So you can just check here if you want to see the current status of where things are. And it should be done now. So there you go, installation complete. Let's go to next, and here again, um, this is totally up to you on what you want installed. Um, you could you know, choose what browsers you want or whatever it might be. Take your time, do whatever you need. I'm just gonna skip through because I don't need it for this tutorial. So it should be done, hit next. Here, everything is now done. So now that that's done, what we're gonna wanna do next is uh, run updates, so open terminal. You type in just update and then type in your super user password. And just let the update run in the background. While it's running, we could just start installing a bunch of Decky plugins. So let's just open Firefox or whatever web browser is pre-installed. So Firefox, and then let's go back to the Legion Go Tricks website. All right, so now that you're on the Legion Go Tricks website, uh, let's just scroll down to resources. So there should be resources right here. From here, we're going to want to install, HHD should already be pre-installed on Bazite now, so you don't need to touch this at all. But you'll, you'll want the Decky plugin for it. And then we're also going to want to uh, set up the simple Decky TDP plugin. And then optionally, you're also going to want this RGB plugin. So if we go back to, we'll first go here, HHD Decky. And we're going to want to just run the quick install. So there should be a quick install right here. So you just click this to copy. So this is the terminal update, and it requires internet. Let's just hit yes and let the update start running. Um, forgot to do that. Not from here, click here, click new tab. And from here, we're gonna to wanna to run that, what we just copied from the website. So right click paste, hit enter, and this will prompt you for your password. And that's done. HHD Decky is installed. Let's go on to the next plugin. 
for this one, what we're going to want to do is that there's going to be quick install instructions, but there's also a Bazite installer, and I would recommend doing this one. So just write that, and that should be done. Cool. And then lastly, you want to go to Legion Go Remapper, and what this will do is um, it'll have RGB control and stuff, but you don't have to use it, but it will have um, fan curve support, and this will require the new uh, the newest BIOS, version 29. So right now only 28 is out. But once 29 is out, this should just start working, the fan curves. So we might as well just install it now, so it'll, you'll be ready. So, so you just copy the quick install again, paste it in, and that's it. So afterwards, we are done with the Deki plugins, and the updates are done. So let's just reboot and get back into let's get into game mode. So start, restart, and restart. And I'll see you guys back in game mode. So after reboot, we were prompted for to do all the login and everything. So I'm just going to update and then log in. Now that we're in game mode, um, let's just start going through some checks to make sure everything's working. So right now. Uh, I'm going to get into the quick access menu, so I'm going to click this for a quick access menu. But if you swapped it in Windows, uh, if you swap the Legion buttons with the start select, then it's going to be one of these buttons. But here, let's go into the Deki plugins, and from here, handheld daemon. Let's change the DualSense to DualSense Edge so we get back buttons. Um, and then it takes a moment to kick in, so now that's kicked in. I'm going to swap, I'm going to do the Legion swap on Linux. So I'm going to do left is select. And then finally, is there anything, any other options here that we want to set? Um, let's just, uh, change the touchpad to the controller touchpad, so it emulates the DualSense touchpad. All right, and besides that, um, that's it for here. And then next, let's go into the TDP plugin, and let's change this to go to 5 watts as the minimum, and then 30 watts as the max. And that sets the, you saw the TDP slider, it sets the min and the max on this slider. And then now there's another option though you could do is there's an advanced option to fix the Steam TDP slider and GPU slider. So if you click this, you go into here, and go into advanced view, the TDP and GPU slider should work. So if we try the um, the TDP slider, it shows normally it would show 15 as the max, but because um, because the Steam Deck it has a 15 of max, but this time now you can see it goes all the way up to whatever limit you had set. Uh, so if we want to test to make sure this works, let's just ch manually change it to LED with Legion L plus Y. Change it to blue, right? And now if we change the TDP, it should change to purple. So change it back to purple. Yeah, so if I change it to blue and change the TDP, change the purple. So we know the TDP changing is working. Um, so that's that. For the GPU, if you click this and the, and the frequency bar doesn't show up, you most likely will need to update your um, Bazite OS. Something might be um, up, out, of, out of date, but this frequency bar should show up. Um, but yeah, so there's that for TDP control. And then let's see, is there anything else that we want to set here? We just verify that the fan control is working, so we go to enable fan control. Down here, this fan, this fan curve won't actually start working until BIOS version 29 is out, but you could test to make sure that it's actually uh, the rest of it's working, but if you click this, it kicks the fan into full gear, so you hear the fan. Let's turn it off. Okay. And then finally, let's go into the settings, go into the controller, and we can see the dual sense edge here. If we can begin test, you can see when I click the back buttons, it's turning to true. So true, false, true, false. And then you can just test all your inputs, make sure everything's working, make sure the touchpad is showing up. And if then you want to just also check if gyro is working, go into here. You can see the gyro moving. And then finally for LEDs, let's just turn off the brightness so you can see it turn on. So you can just make sure everything is working. Yep. Awesome. So everything's working here. And let's also let's go into display and at the very bottom, disable unified limit and enable color temperature native. So now if we go into here, you should now see a 144 hertz and you could go down to 60 hertz. So, but note one thing, any value in between on this refresh rate slider is dangerous. The Legion Go doesn't support it in Linux, so if you do any value in the middle, it's going to be really, like, really, really, um, really dangerous, so don't do it. So if you want to change the refresh rate, the only way I would recommend it is actually you have to use a finger and tap um, the, each end, and don't ever set anything in the middle. It has to be 144 or 60, nothing else. Uh, I wish there was a way we could change this, but right now this is controlled by Steam and we have no way of fixing it. Maybe in the future we'll find some way to fix it. But for now, you have to choose 144 or 60. Also in Steam UI, even if you set 60, 
it won't actually kick in. Uh, Steam UI, you can't set frame rates. But in games, you should see the refresh rate actually uh, change. But for now, let's just leave it at 144. All right, so I think you're basically done with setup at this point, but there's just some bugs that I think you should be aware of. So sometimes for controller, um, you'll have the, dual, the emulated DualSense Edge controller, but sometimes the DualSense and the Xbox controller will both, both show up, the original Xbox controller that was built in. Um, and when that happens, the solution is simple. You just flip the FPS switch, so the FPS mode switch, you just flip it off and then on and let it reconnect. And that will reconnect with just the DualSense show, uh, showing up. So if you ever see the Xbox and the DualSense, you can just flip it to change, make it just DualSense. And then also here, sometimes what will happen is that it's not showing up now, but sometimes here there'll be an option to reorder controllers um, reorder controllers. And if you click it, it'll show the DualSense as player two, even though there's only one controller attached, which is player one. So um, sometimes you'll notice that in games, like the controller is not working, it usually just means that here, it's for some reason set as player two instead of player one. So just change it back to player one and you'll be good to go. Those are some bugs just to be aware of for the controller. And we're basically fully set up at this point. Everything after this point is optional. Um, so if you want to stop here in this video, you could stop, or we could keep going and set up nested desktop. So let's go back into desktop mode and set up nested desktop. So now that we're in desktop mode, um, let's download this script so you could change the nested desktop re resolution to whatever you want it to be. So I just click this, um, click the download button, and that's just download the file. Um, and we'll use that later. So you can just download that and leave it as is. Now here, what we're going to want to do is open a terminal and type in which um, slash user slash bin slash steamOS nested desktop. And this just confirms that the file is there. If this is here, then it's installed. If it's not here, something's wrong, and go ask on the Bazai Discord. But since it's we've confirmed that it's installed, you can just go to Steam, add a non-Steam game, hit Browse, and change this to all files. And then here, click on this and go to slash user slash bin, which is the first part of the path for that SteamOS file, right? And then here, we look for SteamOS nested desktop. And I don't know why the option's up here, but choose nested desktop. Let's close this and hit open. Here, click add select a program. So if we go to library, we go to um, nested desktop, it should show up in Steam, which is exactly what you need. All right, so the next, Let's go back to the browser where we downloaded that, right? If we open the folder, here's the, that script. You could right-click, Properties, Permissions, and make it executable. Hit OK. And then if you hit Open Terminal here, the other way you could change the permission is to chmod plus x, and the name of the file, which is exactly the same thing for to make it executable. It just does it in Terminal. And after that, what you could do is dot slash, Actually, no, before we do that, um, right-click, open. And this is the resolution it's going to set for nested desktop, 1920 by 1200. But you might want to set this to like 800p or 1600p, whatever it might be. Like if you want to do 1600p, it should be 1600, and this should be 2560, I believe. But whatever resolution you want, edit it, save the file, and then close it. I'm going to leave it on 1200, just uh, because that's what I prefer, but you choose whatever you want. But now that we set that resolution, now you do dot slash and run that script. So let's run the script. So nested desktop will have this resolution. So now we can close this uh, and just return to game mode. And let's do, there's a few more settings that need to be done for nested desktop. So let's just get into game mode. Now that we're in game mode, um, open the Steam menu, go to the library and go to your non-Steam games, go to SteamOS nested desktop and go to properties. And in here, that resolution you set, I set 1200p, right? So look through here and find the resolution you had set and make sure you uh, enable that game resolution, um, which is important. And now if you play, um, it's going to run SteamOS Nested Desktop. There you go, now it's loaded in. Yeah, that's really it for Nested Desktop. Um, oh, well, oh, I guess one thing you could do is if you go here, go into the controller settings, and if you go into the gamepad, you go to community layouts, hit square, and then you can now choose a nested desktop layout. And I guess, well, let's take this one, let's try it. So if you click that, you can see what it does, and then hit square to apply. So once now that works now, then on the desktop, um, you're gonna be able to do stuff like move the mouse, and, and you could click, 
you whatever that profile had set. So I'm assuming L2 is it, L2 is right click and it, it looks like it. Yep, and then left click, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you could do whatever you want with this profile. So there's really one more thing I would recommend setting up, um, and that's for the battery indicator. So for this battery indicator, sometimes it shows up and works, like right now it's working, but sometimes it doesn't show up and it just doesn't work. Um, so I'm just gonna quick uh, install, we're gonna set up a quick workaround where on the first performance overlay, normally it shows just the FPS, we'll just have it show the battery instead. Um, this is technically an optional workaround. You don't need to do it if you don't want to, um, but I'm just gonna do it real quick. So let's open nested desktop. And then from here, we're gonna to wanna to go to the Legion Tricks, Legion Go Tricks repo. Oh, by the way, if it gets stuck loading, uh, nested desktop gets stuck loading, it's fine to just go here, close it, and reopen it again. It's totally fine and totally safe to do so. So sometimes it might take one or two tries. Um, but meanwhile, let's just go here, and there's going to be a, where is it? Sattery, setup battery indicator overlay. So it's a script, just download it. And then what you could do is here, right click, open terminal, from here, let's do a chmod plus x, and this will be the setup battery indicator overlay. Just do that, just and just do um, setup, just run the script. There you go, that's it. So if you want to know what this script actually does, it opens this mango HUD directory, creates this presets file, and just fills it with these values. So if you zoom in, you see the values here where battery one equals enable, zero equals disable. So it just enables showing the battery. Um, but basically you could actually play around and change um, what shows up in the over, uh, shows up in the overlay. So this is totally up to you. So you could customize this to your, your choosing. So if I go here now and do one, you see now in the top left, the battery has started showing up. And this should always be correct. Um, but like I said, you could change it around. Like if I change this to one, hit save it, right? and then rerun the script, right? So if I just rerun the script, now if we go uh, here and change the, like change the overlay back to one, you'll now see the FPS as well. So yeah, feel free to play around with it if you want. And finally, two more things. Um, so basically right now after installing Bazite, it's going to default to booting Bazite first when you, if you restart and boot. Um, and for some, they might want to boot into Windows and make Bazite optional, so I'll just show you how to do that real quick. So let's just shut it down, and then I'll be back after the shutdown. So after shutting down, I booted back into the BIOS. We want to go into BIOS Setup. So let's click BIOS Setup, and here you'll notice there's a bunch of boot devices. Oh, actually my USB is still plugged in. Let me unplug that. Um, but basically what you want to do is take your Windows Boot Manager and just move it to the top. So just if you click the, the, the arrow, it moves Windows to the top, and that's all you got to do. Once you do that, if you reboot, it will normally boot into Windows first. And then if you hold the power button with plus, um, it will boot into BIOS and you could select, um, you can select Linux in the boot menu. But yeah, um, it's pretty simple for it to do that. Um, and the last thing I'll show you, let's save and exit. The last thing I'll show you is how to completely remove Linux from the device. If you decide it's not for you afterwards, like it's very easy to do. Um, so. We want to boot into Windows, and from Windows, um, I'll show you really quick how to um, get rid of it, if you so choose to. Now that we're back in desktop mode, just load up that partition manager again, and we're just going to delete these extra partitions that we made for Linux, right? Um, so just click here, right click, um, and just delete partition. And then right click here, also delete partition. And then here we could just also delete partition, just delete all of them. And then afterwards, we could resize this, have it take up all the space, hit OK, hit Apply Changes, and then just hit OK. That's it. So now that that's done, we could reboot, and it'll just reboot straight into Windows. So let's just do a reboot real quick. So now it's rebooting, and we'll just go straight right back into Windows. And there you go. Um, you're now back to clean Windows install um, if you decided to go back. Um, but that's really it. That's the entire setup for dual boot as well as deleting the dual boot if you no longer want it. But yeah, that's basically it for Bazite dual boot. 
Um, you can always um, do extra stuff like customize things, like you use CSS loader to customize the UI. Um, or if you want for nested desktop, you could add, you know, you could change nested desktop to, um, you know, have artwork and stuff. I use the Steam Grid DB plugin. So if I use the Steam Grid DB, it lets you set custom artwork. And there's lots of things you could do. Um, but, anyways, that's it for me.